Yongchun White Crane, or Yongchun Bai Hecheng, has links to Wing Chun and karate and is one of the major stars from Fujian province in China. Martin Watts has written the first major work in English on the subject, which we are going to look at this week. Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt. If you're new here, this is a channel about how Chinese martial arts enrich our lives. If that sounds interesting to you, then maybe consider subscribing. Also, if there's any topics you want me to cover, let me know in the comments. So, this week we're talking about Martin Watts' awesome book, <laughs> Yongchun White Crane. I'm going to put some timestamps down in the doobie below, so um, if you want to skip to some other bits, crack on. So far in my book reviews, I haven't wasted my time reviewing books that aren't worth reading, and this is no different. So, let's talk about it. Now, I've been following Martin Watts since about 2005, but when I got to uni in 2005, YouTube didn't really have any kung fu videos on it at all. Shout out to Eric Ling, who was one of the early pioneers of putting some decent stuff on YouTube. So, what I would have to do is go online and download videos, and one man who put many, many videos online was Martin Watts. So, if somehow you don't know who Martin Watts is, he travelled to Yongchun in 1993, I think, from reading somewhere. He went to Yongchun, started training White Crane, 30 years later, he writes this book. So he's renowned internationally as an expert on this subject, and it's no surprise, given his, his wealth of experience, that it's a really good book. If you're interested in anything to do with White Crane, you should have this book. I just type Crane Combination, and so half of what we do is Yong Chun White Crane, and it's fascinating to see the similarities, but also the differences between the two. So the book is not a move-by-move -move account of Yong Chun White Crane. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It covers sort of the deep theory behind everything, but it's explained in a clear and concise way. Now, Yong Chun White Crane was the original White Crane style, and so everything is derived from it, and anyone who's done any other type of crane knows how different the types of crane can be. However, it's always good to come back to the source and, and see what the root of things are. So Martin explains the history of Yong Chun White Crane, but he goes beyond the sort of stereotypical, oh, Feng Qi uh, poked a crane with a stick. <laughs> he talks about actually what's happened in Yong Chun. I found this particularly enlightening having read David Ross's book on Chinese martial arts in in its historical context, uh, which I'll link up here if you haven't watched that one. And so Martin in this book mentions the, the Hangzhou and Nanjing tournaments in 1928 and 1929, which now we know part of the nationalist movement and, and why those tournaments were happening as well. Man, I wish I had a time machine if I could go back to those tournaments uh, in Nanjing and Hangzhou. That would be so, so cool, especially now that I know there were some white crane practitioners there. So Martin, his discussion gives the sort of wider cultural landscape of Yongchun at the minute, including details of the practitioners there at the moment. So what I found enlightening as well was Martin talking about the two branches of Yongchun White Crane, and they have this shared history, but there's also slight differences between the two in terms of the forms that they do and their emphasis. So people have friends in the other branch and exchange movements, so the principles are the same. So someone who's mentioned in that discussion is Zheng Qingyong, so uh, he's the chap that I met eating oranges, so if you haven't watched my video about why you should learn Chinese, I'll link that up here as well. But it's interesting to start to see the wider context. Certainly for me, I, I didn't know nearly as much about Yong Chun White Crane. So for me, as someone who practices what we call Tiger Crane Combination, it's really interesting to see Martin when he's discussing these two different branches and the pattern Shu San Tai Bao. So if you don't know what that is, that's a pattern, one of the early patterns in Yong Chun White Crane, but it's something that we have in the Tiger Crane combination. And the pattern was only created in the 20th century, approximately Martin is saying. And so the split from Yong Chun White Crane was relatively recently, 1920s or so. And when you've got those two branches, you've got Shu San Tai Bao and the 13 shakes on the other side, but the, the Shu San Tai Bao we have was created from that 13 shakes. So I find it interesting that the Tiger Crane combination, which I do, hadn't actually split from Yong Chun White Crane until relatively recently in the grand scheme of Chinese history and Chinese martial arts. Now, given what I mentioned before in David Ross's book around internal and external. It's really interesting in Martin's book here, he talks about the Wai Gong and Nei Gong in, in Yong Chun White Crane. So even an external style has these internal movements. And there's a huge part of the book where we talk about theory 
and I think that's invaluable. I just think it's really interesting when you read other people's theory of their styles to reflect on your own styles. So obviously anyone who does Wing Chun, any style from Fujian, even lots of the types of karate which are influenced by White Crane, I think anybody in any of those camps will get something from reading the theory section of this book. So just to give you an example from the book, uh, some of the theory is yield ground before yielding stance, keep movements clean when not in contact, keep movements dirty when in contact, and defense and attack are not separated. There's, there's loads more. One of the things that I found interesting was Martin has then translated one of the white crane texts, which is really quite cool. One of the parts mentioned in there is Hard is soft, soft is hard, the two must be finely combined. And an insightful part of the book is an interview he does with one of the older masters, Yan Gong Kan. And for me, I thought that was enlightening in terms of looking at the importance of fundamentals. And it also gives an insight into what's often said about the arts in mainland China in that in the Cultural Revolution, somehow all the Chinese masters either left or stopped training and, and that was it and anything that was left wasn't proper kung fu whereas the master says actually they still kept trading i mean i guess they're a bit more out in the countryside in yongchun particularly as it would have been back in those days but they kept training all the way through just perhaps a little bit more in secret and one thing you might find interesting is there is a sort of move by move account in terms of the movements of the babishi for karate and the Yong Chun White Crane movements. So anyone, anyone who does karate would probably find that the most insightful part of the book, I'm sure. Now, I will say it's a little hard to sometimes to follow along with some of the pictures. It's a Kung Fu book, so we've got to have pictures of people doing some kind of hand movement and then some sort of arrows going in different directions. That's par for the course. Um, I'm sure it's probably quite straightforward if you know what the movements are, but I found some of them a little hard to follow along with. And another thing I'd like to see is perhaps almost like a follow-up book, Martin, if you're watching. Um, there is lots of mention of this white crane theory, and I'd love to see how all of that is put into practice uh, in terms of exactly what movements do what, the effect because of that theory, etc., etc. So there's a whole load more stuff in the book, but we haven't got time to do everything. If you want to find out more, I really recommend you read the book. What I'll do is I'll put a link below. Um, I don't think it's on Amazon, so it might make it easier to find. Also, what I'm gonna do is, all these books that I've now, now reviewed, I'm gonna put a playlist up on the screen, which I think will be over here, he says. If there's any books you think I should do or anything you want to see on the channel, let me know. If you got this far, please consider subscribing, that would help me out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.